Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Commodity TV here in Zurich for the Zuri Invest and the Zuri Invest Night, which will happen tonight at the Dolder Grand Hotel. And now we want to talk to First Mining Gold and Dan Wilton, the CEO, is here with us. Hey, good to see you. Good to time. see you. Yeah, it's been a little while. <laughs> yeah, perfect. Hope you're in good shape. I mean, gold is uh, doing fine. And finally, your gold price, uh, your gold price, your share price is also picking up. Now, Starting right? to react a yeah. little bit. Yeah, listen, I think the gold price is healthy. I think it's still got some more room to go. Yeah. Uh, and I think finally we've got investors starting to realize that, you know, there are a shortage of important development mm -hmm. projects, particularly in Canada, and we've got a couple of great ones. Yeah, definitely. Let's start with the Spring Pole project. Yes. I think you had already a very good uh, PFS. Right? Yes. Uh, yep. Can you? Give us some ideas about the size of the project, about what what could we expect? Because yeah. we're working on the feasibility. On the feasibility yeah. studies. Feasibility studies about 90% done. Mm -hmm. So our pre-fees was done in 2021, mm -hmm. showed a project that could produce more than 300,000 ounces a year, oh, nice. all in sustaining cost, well in the lowest quartile. Um, and uh, upfront capital cost of about 718 million US mm -hmm. with an after tax NPV at a $1,600 gold price mm -hmm. of just shy of a billion dollars US. Oops. So, you know, the important thing with that, with, with both of our projects, but Spring Pole in particular, the leverage that that project has to the gold price mm -hmm. is significant. Every $100 in the gold price is about $150 million of after tax NPV at Spring Pole. That's a lot. That's a lot of leverage. Lot Absolutely. Of yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And we are now at 2,365. Yeah, that uh, makes an amount, I would say. It's a big number <laughs> relative to our market cap, which is still yeah. just a little bit more than 100 US. Yeah, yeah. definitely, definitely. Um, so you, you said 90% of the FS is completed. Yeah. Um, can you give us already a little bit of an idea, I would call it, in comparison to 2021, have the numbers, let's say, dramatically <coughs> changed, uh, meaning especially the costs? Yeah, I think the costs have gone up. Yeah. Certainly operating costs, capital costs, we know there's been inflation in there. We've done a couple of things to engineer cost out of the project as well. So on a net basis, uh, you know, we think that there's, um, let's say... Net net probably twenty five percent inflation on that capital cost, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but again for a project of this size, that twenty five percent increase in the capital cost gets more than weighed off by a hundred dollar increment in the gold price. Yeah, absolutely. No, because especially when you did sixteen hundred, and now with the FS you maybe do I don't know eighteen hundred dollars to be on the conservative side, but we are two thousand three hundred. So yeah, I think there's a lot of room for positive surprises. What would be the anticipated uh, production cost, just roughly. I know it's a forward-looking statement, but what would you expect? Is it like uh, $1,400, $1,000 per ounce? Is it lower? Than yeah, it's sub $1,000 an ounce, I think, is wow. what we're looking at there. And you got to remember, it's a it's a big open pit mm -hmm. uh, mine. Mm -hmm. uh, grades about one gram gold and five gram silver, although there is a higher grade starter pit and a real high grade core that you produce from first. Um, but it's a big bulk tonnage disseminated ore body mm -hmm. that you can mine really efficiently. It's got a low strip ratio. Mm -hmm. Project's going to be connected to grid power. Mm -hmm. So with all of those things, there's a lot of really positive impacts that keep that cost, I think, in that sub-1,000 all-in sustaining. Okay, so when you say 90% is ready, when do you expect to release that? So we need to do some more field work in the winter. There's mm -hmm. the last bit of drilling we need to do from ice on the project. So that we'd like to do in this coming winter. And then it's really just going to be capital dependent. Mm -hmm. You know, the cost of that feasibility study is not insignificant to finish it off. Um, but ultimately, we'd like to have that fees out about the same time as we're expecting environmental assessment approval, mm -hmm. which is uh, kind of the end of 2025. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's say from here, a good one and a half years. Yeah, yeah, I think then that's probably Things right. should be done. Yep. And then you can go into project finance. Uh, then you have follow-on permitting, but you're you're negotiating and figuring out your project financing as you go in that direction. But with mm -hmm. a project like Spring Pole, I think there's a significant probability mm -hmm. that that's a project that we might bring a partner in mm -hmm. on. You know, And part of that is the discussion earlier about just the shortage of big projects. I think this is a pretty unique uh, beast in Canada, and I think something that at some point the strategic uh, potential partners are really going to recognize that value. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that there, there, there could something happen. <laughs> you never know. You never know. You never know. Okay, before we come to du, du Parquet, um, Birch Uchi yes. is also something which is surrounding. Yeah, as let's... I understood in the, in the regional yep. exploration. Is that 
a thing like a, it seemed to me a little bit like a joker in your presentation. Uh, oh, uh, I think a wild card would oh, be the way that I card. would put it. Okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want you calling me a joker. That may have a different connotation. Um, yeah, I think, you know, we put together an almost 70,000 hectare land package around Springpole mm -hmm. that's covered most of what we think is the best geology in this Bertucci greenstone belt, mm -hmm. which is basically the same, uh, the same belt of rocks that goes from Pickle Lake, where they've been mining for 100 years, mm -hmm. down over by Springpole and then up to Red Lake, where, you know, major discoveries in this same type of geology, Great Bear a few years ago, we think there are great bears to be discovered on this land package. Mm -hmm. So we've been doing a lot of the sort of early stage work, uh, boot and hammer geology, lots of field testing, soil sampling, geophysics, working up now I think more than 80 targets that we have in this belt. Mm -hmm. We've drill tested three of them. We found gold in all three, including some pretty interesting results. We drilled 114 meters of 0.9 grams last year, mm -hmm. almost right from surface in a, in a project that's... 15 kilometers from spring pool. Huh. So lots of room for this to continue to grow. Mm -hmm. We're not going to spend a ton of money on it mm -hmm. right now with our share price where it is. But I think we've undoubtedly demonstrated that this is a district mm -hmm. uh, and you're going to see production from multiple mines in this district, I think over a generation. Mm -hmm. So that means you could like do with uh, spring polar hub and spoke strategy. Then. That's exactly it. And the important mm -hmm. thing is when you get the mill built, mm -hmm. your threshold for exploration success really isn't that high. You get, you know, half a million ounces at two grams or something like that. That's going to be really valuable to your mine plan at Spring Pool. So longer term, I think this district scale exploration is exactly what the larger companies are looking for in projects. Mm -hmm. Super. Okay, that sounds like a real wild card. Like there you go. <laughs> Fantastic. Let's talk about <coughs> DuPacket. Yes. So what's going on there? You have a PEA there? Are you yep. doing PEA, further work for, the, uh, for um, pre PFS. So the PEA we put out last year was really scoping that project as another significant producer. So more than 200,000 ounces a year, uh, upfront capital of about 700 Canadian million. Um, million. Yep. Um, all in sustaining costs again, sub a thousand. Mm -hmm. uh, so it scoped a really, uh, I think, significant and attractive project there. Uh, we're continuing exploration. That's one of the things about Dupark A. We've consolidated the land package around it. We've got 19 kilometers of the Porcupine Destor Fault, one of the main controlling structures mm -hmm. in the Abitibi Gold Belt. Um, and we honestly think this project has barely been drilled below 500 meters. And every other deposit in the Abitibi, you know, the real deposits start a kilometer down. Mm -hmm. So in the first 500 meters, uh, right at the Duparquet deposit itself, they mined a million and a half ounces, and we've got another three and a half million ounces of m &I, another million and a half of inferred mm -hmm. sitting there right now. So six and a half million ounce endowment in the first 500 meters, and almost no testing below, but everything that's been drilled demonstrates continuity to depth. Mm -hmm. So we know that this is going to continue to depth. We know that there's a lot of uh, just extension of these existing ore bodies along strike. And our team has discovered a couple of new zones mm -hmm. sort of on the margins of the cyanide intrusive that was the main ore body that they mined in the olden days. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, from our perspective, we see a very clear path for this project to be 10 million ounces plus. Oh, wow. That's, that's a big boy. <laughs> that's, yeah, it would actually make it, you know, wow. one of the top mm -hmm. two or three, well, we'll call it a top five maybe ever deposit in the Abitibi. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Yeah. So could you imagine if somebody would approach you because the M&A is now really moving forward? It as is. we saw with the last uh, Alamos, et cetera, yeah. uh, Caliber was doing Marathon. And I think you have two fantastic projects which could be operated uh, separately easily. Mm -hmm. um, would you say... Okay, if somebody makes a bet for Duparquet, we would be fine because then Spring Pole is financed, for example. I think Could it. Be something? I think it gives us a lot of flexibility mm -hmm. in how we might bring partners into each of the projects. Mm -hmm. There's some partners that should like both, mm -hmm. um, but whether that's the highest value, we need to continue to to grow the projects mm -hmm. ourselves and take risk out of them, like we know that our team can. So that's job number one: do what is in our control. Mm -hmm. And I think you're going to see that strategic interest build as we move forward towards that. So um, yeah, I, absolutely. There's uh, an opportunity to bring a partner in on one and not the other. Mm -hmm. um, just, you know, these are both projects that could use 
lots of investment to make them bigger, grow them faster, move them forward faster. But there's also, there's an interesting angle at Duparquet as well, which is that where it sits in the middle of the Abitibi gold belt, we've got 14 mills within 200 kilometers of this project. Mm -hmm. So it's trackable distance. If you have a high enough grade yeah. open pit yeah. mine, it certainly is. You know, this was a, a, a project that was mined underground at an average grade of four grams for 20 years. Mm -hmm. So we know that there's some of that, obviously, that's there. Mm -hmm. uh, but we also know that there are higher grade open pits at surface with reasonable strip ratios that we think you could put together a mine plan that could be pretty attractive for someone who has a mill around that needs feed. And that's mm -hmm. most of these mills in the Abitibi. So... Mm -hmm. Could that be an opportunity for yeah. us at a very low capital cost yeah. to maybe get this project into production sooner than mm -hmm. most people would think in terms mm -hmm. of a permitting time frame? That's one of the things that we're starting to look at now. We should have more news on that over the course of the next, you know, call it uh, two or three months. Oh, okay. Super. So you're working on something. I like that. There we go. <laughs> Always something going on in the background here. Absolutely. Never a dull moment. Um, if we look at your shareholder base, <coughs> what... Uh, are you doing or what what commitments do you have that you are making sure not to be taken over too cheap and too early well because i think that's <laughs> the biggest uh danger i see it it is in that sense positive danger. yeah it is <laughs> you, you got to remember a lot of our shareholder base so keith newmeyer is mm -hmm. probably still our biggest uh single shareholder mm -hmm. and a lot of our shareholders are people who have followed keith and backed keith through many of the many of the the ventures in his career particularly First Majestic, and long-term shareholders of First Mining. So, listen, I think, we're, first and foremost, we're always going to do the right thing for the shareholders. Mm -hmm. I think in that situation, you know, very not very often we get hostile mm -hmm. takeover bids, and particularly, you know, for projects kind of at our stage of development. Mm -hmm. You really need to sort of be on the inside to understand what could happen. Um, and I think in the end, if something like that were to happen, your best defense is really to make sure you got a number of people who are familiar with your projects and you know ultimately be in a position where you can generate that competitive tension to mm -hmm. ultimately surface the best value for the shareholders and we've seen that a few times in Canada in the last in the last couple of years you if you remember uh Noront that ended up getting bought mm -hmm. by Wailu in the Ring of Fire i mean that was a takeover bid that you know the ultimate price it sold for was I think three times what the initial mm -hmm. bid was, just mm -hmm. because there were two parties, mm -hmm. both very I think capable. That's the best what you can have, two or three parties. <laughs> yeah, 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 or more, or more. And I think, you know, with the yeah. shortage of projects that can be developed mm -hmm. in Canada, real shortage of projects that can be built mm -hmm. in the next three to five years, mm -hmm. I think that bigger companies are starting to appreciate that scarcity of those projects. And they don't really appreciate that ours is one of the next ones to get environmental assessment approval mm -hmm. at Springpool. That would be the big thing. That's a big thing. I think Definitely. they look at the de-risking there. It's yeah. that. And I think it's moving forward and us getting to agreements and securing mm -hmm. consent from the indigenous communities we're working mm -hmm. with. Mm -hmm. And we uh, you know, are able to move forward on a couple of those fronts, successfully conclude those deals uh, and, you know, bring those partners to the table, I think that's where you're going to see real, Absolutely. real so value. You, you have a good relationship with them? Yeah, you know, it's, uh, we do. Mm -hmm. There's, it's obviously, it's a lot of work mm -hmm. and uh, we have to do a lot of listening. There's a lot mm -hmm. that we've had to come, kind of come to understand mm -hmm. in terms of the priorities of the communities, but it's really important for us to make sure that we're doing a good job of listening. Um, and the communities, we're very thankful. They're doing a lot of work uh, behind the scenes in terms of reviewing our environmental assessment documents, mm -hmm. providing us with comments, getting us uh, feedback on their traditional knowledge and traditional land use work. And, you know, that's, uh, it's continued to progress here. So, right, and these are communities that, you know, this is a lot of work for them. So we really are appreciative of all the work that they do. Mm -hmm. Super, perfect. So then I would say, make the pride as look as good as possible to get the highest pride. <laughs> There's still a lot but, we can uh, do between here and there. Yeah, a lot exactly. we can do but between I, here I and there to add value. If you stay with that for, uh, <coughs> for uh, let's say, a longer time, uh, because I think today it would be way too cheap. Yeah, we were yeah. still sitting at, you know, trading, even with the share price yeah. having run up, it's still probably less than $10 an ounce. Mm, exactly. You know, yeah. and we all know that in history, these projects, 
in good markets mm -hmm. have sold for 100 to 200 dollars an ounce. And I think that's kind of the trajectory that we can see here. Mm -hmm. And we can continue to grow those ounces, mm -hmm. particularly at Duparquet. Mm -hmm. And we can permitting. continue to, you know, take risk out through the permitting yeah. and uh, and feasibility stage of both projects. So, exactly. yeah, it's a pretty clear path. Lots of uh, lots of avenues for share price appreciation here. Yeah, super. Then thank you very much. Wish you all the best. And thank uh, you. As I said, keep it going. And I think you have two wonderful projects with a super wild card. And this is something, yeah, to to be made money. Yeah, absolutely. We hope so. Great. Okay. Thank you very much. Thanks. Okay, <laughs> cheers. Thank yeah, ladies and gentlemen, there was Dan Wilton, the CEO of First Mining Gold. And uh, you heard it, two fantastic projects which could be turned each into a mine. And uh, really with significant ounces, not only in the inventory, but also for annual production, 300,000 ounces per annum. That's exactly what the midsize or even the larger producers are searching for. And don't forget, it's in Canada. And that is fantastic. And a nice wildcard in addition. So I think uh, with all the permitting coming on, uh, uh, coming really along now and uh, with the feasibility study for Spring Pole and the pre-feasibility study for Duparquet, I think this is a fantastic value proposition and a great call on the gold price. But we have no bank against you. So check it out. Thanks for watching us. Bye-bye from Zurich. That was Commodity TV for Zurich Invest.